Getting wrecked this morning. Nobody's open for food. Waiting for cars to open. It's posted up, waiting for food. The dreaded, forgot your tag at home, text. Dang it. Kyle says he's almost here. Nice. Kyle's transmission's already hot. Nice. Two tough texts already. <laughs> Got fuel, then went over to cars. Poor lady had to make us freaking one, two, three, eight sandwiches. Took 10 years. <laughs> Took freaking forever. 30 minutes. Just got done eating, Kyle's gonna be here soon. I missed it. Uh, we're in uh, Chickaloo. Chickaloo, blue tire off. Yeah, so it looks like it started wallering out and then just freaking shredded every stud off. This tire was bouncing down the highway. As fast as Kyle at 50 miles an hour. Uh, damn near past it. Bouncing down the highway, probably a thousand feet. Axle just dragging on the ground. Of course, right on the bend as you're coming into Chickaloon. We had to divert traffic. Kate had to freaking go around the bend, get people to slow down. Oh man, then we had to unload the buggy in the highway. Luckily, trailer is still drivable without that tire on there, so Kyle is ripping back to Wasilla right now. And he's just trying to get a hold of somebody with a car hauler. What a freaking trip already. I should do. Dude, that was a miracle that worked out. Because we asked so many people and it was just falling through, falling through, falling through. Uh Good. We're strapped down and rolling. We freaking made her though. Oh man. It is uh, 11.10. We should be in Delcina by now. Yeah, overheating problems with the buggy. We're trying to pull that. Just getting unloaded now, the parking lot's full. We found probably the last three spots in here. Just gonna get suited up, throw some stuff on, and get to ripping here. Okay, Todd, come this way. Hit that throttle. Oh, yeah. Need some momentum. Russ, Jen, and Greg were ahead of us with a blown trailer tire. We had brought a spare tire with us and had a goal of getting to them before it got dark. Dude, the one's got three brow tines, for sure. How many mooses over there? One, two, six. six. They're traveling. Two cows, a calf, and two bulls. And it's all right, it's all good. Keep That's rolling. Good. good sign. Finally. I met out with my dad, Greg. They got the trailer tire fixed. And now we are just dropping in to our little valley. We're still like 45 minutes from the camp. We're trying to get tough on the right now. The 
Aside from a slow start and a minor repair on the buggy, I'd say the ride in went pretty smooth. By about 10 p.m., we had made it to Moose Camp and we were ready for some solid sleep in our 80 degree tent. You can see him? Right out there in the, in the yellow. Fork and fork. He's a straight fork. Dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same on that thing. 463. 463? Really? Oh, my gosh. Dude, let's drop him. That is dead giveaway. It's kind of pretty. pretty. Yeah. Oh, so I woke up early this morning, got up, hit the trail at like seven. Only saw three moose, but one of them was at fork. I dropped off the ridge, rides I was dropping off the ridge to close the distance on it. He went into the trees, so I figured we may as well just let him chill. And we'd come back out in the afternoon with the rifles and see if my dad could get them. So we rolled up, same spot. We've been here for, I don't know, 10 minutes. Then he stepped up. So we're just trying to get a game plan together now. Yeah. You guys need to go down to that pine tree right there. Yeah. The shelf to be able to shoot. Crossing the creek. Four fifty for me, and they're at seventy-two. Oh, I don't think yet. I think they're just trying to get comfy. He's gonna cross back over. What is he doing? He's getting on the gun. And he has earplugs in. He's moving it fast. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. I didn't want to dump him on the other side of the river not knowing. How deep it was? Yeah, we watched him cross. It was freaking it was ankle like deep. Not even knee deep on us. He was at 440. I should I should have pulled the trigger as soon as he stepped up on the other side of the bank. It's all good. That was really I intense. Think, I think we can drive that. It's alright. I mean he could have freaking died in the creek when he's that close, you never know. Alright. That fork never did give us another opportunity. We spent the next few days hunting hard, but all we could turn up were sublegal bulls. I mean, he's big enough you can see him flashing out there. That's good, man. Yeah. That looks kind of wild. <laughs> kind of wild? Yeah. Like badass? Yeah. Do you think I can zoom in with the long lens or not? Is he just It's chewing? way too hard. Or is he kind of way He's too staring at us because we're making so much noise. He's just looking right up at us. Nice work! Which one did you get him with? I had to use 280, I didn't have earplugs. I just had it blown down. I was gonna say, something's going on. No, he hit him twice. Oh, he did? Yeah, yeah. twice. I think I hit him in the back he leg. He missed the first shot, and then he, sh he shot three times, right? Yeah. Yeah, hit him both times. How was that, Cade? Dude, that was so intense. 
seeing them walk, start walking away from us, I was super worried that they were just gonna not give me a good shot, but then they got right past that patch of trees and just turned sideways. Yeah. So, took a shot while he was walking, but I missed, waiting for him to step out from out the, behind them trees, shot again, hit him. He was stunned, so he just he st stayed there, and then I shot him again, he dropped. 350 yards, 280. 350? 350. How'd the old antlers work? I think they helped a little I think bit. They helped. If we didn't have those, I think they would have started hightailing it. Headlamp on and everything, dude. dude. Straight out. Straight Straight out of camp. Camp. What time is it? Like 8:30 in the morning. 7:59. 7:59. Good timing. I was just like, oh my god. I was so delayed, dude. I shot, and for a second I was like, did I miss again? But yeah. It just like, oh, it was a split second after it just he dropped. I was shaking pretty good. Oh, I bet, uh, dude. Yeah, boy. See, you just need dad's luck to come out. There's some forker down, son. Oh, I'm shaking. 280 actually. We have shot moose in way trickier terrain than this, so we knew getting the ranger down to it wasn't going to be an issue at all. If you can get the ranger to it, Russ is one happy guy. Good thing I come this morning? Hell yeah. Huh? I had a good feeling this morning. Me too. Me too. Okay. You got him, brother? Hey. Yeah, two by two, son. Hey, the job's done. There she be. Got it. Yeah, up this little trail. Drug out of the swamp, got him up on flat ground, start gutting. Oh, here we go. <laughs> what? Halving the moose so we can break it down back at camp is usually our goal. Sometimes a bit of cussing and American muscle is all it takes. Back at camp with meat is always a good feeling. Everyone has a sense of relief and weight off their shoulders. Now it was story time for those who weren't out with us on the trail. So we pull out here on the trail and there's a moose right on the trail. Right here on the bottom. Right here. What kind of, like a No, a cow finally. We couldn't see because it was still dark. Okay, okay. So yeah, so we just, we kept moseying on, kept finding moose, you know. Some big each knobs, we would find moose and then uh, I seen a big bull way down, like towards the cabin, way down the valley. And so I was like, let's keep going down the ridge so we can get closer and get a better look at that guy. And as we're getting there, we stop and we start looking for him. And right down the bottom in front of us is two moose of meat. So we start looking at those, and one's a cow, and then we look at the other one, and oh, it's Fork and Fork. So we get the guns and we start walking, me and Dad start walking down off the hill. We had to use Corey's antler thing so they couldn't see us. It looked like a fake moose, you know? So then we get down there and the moose started, the moose seen us, they started getting spooked, so they started going away from us, and then they turned sideways, and I took a shot, I missed, they didn't freak out, they just walked behind some trees, and then when they stepped out again, 
Um, shot again, hit him in the butt. He just stood there, didn't move, so I shot again, and then that's when he dropped. Getting back up. Fuck. All right. I'm trying to shoot. I got one more bullet. What's that? I got one more bullet. Just give me a good range. I don't know how I can hit them but not hit them. Is there wind? I think he's hurt, dude. Well, we got Cade's spike yesterday. Mm -hmm. Me and Dad woke up early, mm -hmm. spotted some caribou up on the ridge, so we went back to camp, picked up Kyle. Mm -hmm. He called Tess mobbed right up here. Parked the wheelers for like mm -hmm. three minutes. Mm -hmm. Saw this one across the valley at 400. Got it, looks like a high, what, like almost a spine shot, pretty high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the front. Mm -hmm. And then we came over here and Finish it off with a 44. Two days, two animals down. Man, I love this place. On the way back to camp, Kyle's boo strapped to his wheeler, a bull crossed us right on the trail. It definitely goes to show how being out on the trail, even if it's hot, sunny, and dusty, can increase your odds of tagging out. Find us a green post and put between these two. We made quick work of Kyle's boo and the extra meat hole was a great addition to an already comfortable camp. The next couple days we were hit with some pretty rough weather. High winds and blowing snow were keeping the animals in cover for most of the day. This meant more quality time back at camp. Cade discovered his wheeler wouldn't start due to an electrical issue. It kept blowing fuses and we couldn't find the short. Our only option was to haul it out on Kyle's buggy. Problem was, we didn't have ramps or a bank tall enough close to camp. 
So we improvised and winched the wheeler up a tree. Add this to the list of strange things I have seen done at this hunting camp. Roll over! Uh, it's gonna, is it gonna flip? We had meat and people that needed to head back to town the next day. Kyle, Russ, and Greg would escort Tuck, Cade, Bree, and Jen back to the parking lot. Weather was calling for sun, so it looked like it was going to be a decent ride out. Halfway back to the truck, Kyle buried the buggy with his heavy load consisting of a wheeler, moose, and caribou. It took all sorts of efforts to get it unstuck, but they eventually got it. At around 12.20 a.m., with temperature hovering just around 32 degrees, they made it back to camp and Russ was definitely excited to sit by the fire. Cold mornings and hot days were making us all very tired. Yes, all of us. You a little bit. Don't mess up. not a lot of animals moving. We caught up on our camp chores, like chopping wood, creek water laundry, and sketchy tire repairs. As a mother of two very adventurous kids, summer was in a constant two steps forward, one step back type of struggle. Creek water laundry was a never ending chore. <laughs> I got you. I just think it makes you more embarrassed today. Let me down. Why? Because I just want to run away. You want to run away? Yes. Why? <laughs> Thank you.
We all hunted hard the next few days. We were seeing more animals with the cold evening temps, but still nothing legal. I managed to call in two bulls. Unfortunately, each were under 50 inches wide. There's another big bull coming out over here. See the horns? Holy s***. See the horns right there? I see some. On our final evening, Tessa spotted a nice boo down below us. But like most caribou, this one was traveling fast and in the wrong direction, which did not provide Greg with a decent shot. As the light faded, Tessa and I watched 10 plus moose in one meadow as they began their pre-rut staging. With a tag still in my pocket, this made going home the next day pretty tough. It's been a good trip. Weather's been kind of too nice. Too hot during the day. Pretty much no clouds the whole time we've been here. So the moose are only moving early in the morning and late at night. But we still got a caribou and a moose. Now we have about three hours of packing and then we'll be on the road. Are you ready, Tuts? Yeah. Nice. Greg's tired. Not mine. plus years of hunting out of the same area and it grows on you. There are a lot of ups and downs looking back on all the times we have spent out here. One minute you never want to go back, the next you never want to leave. It can be love and hate at times, but this area provided meat and memories for us yet again, and for that we will always be grateful. Yeah.